Hello and welcome to the third part in my five part series about how to enrich HubSpot with clay. Now there was a delay between the second and third part of this series because I basically came up with a few different ways of doing this and then I would come up with another idea, start over, another idea, start over. Now I really think that the way that I've landed is the most future proof. And so I wanted to make sure to get it right and to share it because I suspect that there's gonna be a lot of changes in time as clay adds new providers and as those providers, some of them get more accurate, others are proven to be less so. Things like phone validation through phone ready leads and other tools become more ubiquitous. So before we jump in, I just wanna remind you to go back to the first two parts of this series if you haven't seen them already. This video relies on things that were established in the earlier videos. How to use HubSpot lists, how to create lists or tables in Clay with HubSpot as a source, and deduping based on the record ID in HubSpot. So you need to understand those things if you wanna build on top of that progress and keep going here. Please go back and watch that. And towards the end of the video, I'm gonna show you not only the providers, that throughout the video, I'm gonna show you the providers and the enrichment process, which I think is pretty unique the way we did it here. But I'm also gonna show you at the end how you could integrate this with a full omni-channel outbound sequence with LinkedIn, with phone, all orchestrated through HubSpot and with those numbers and those LinkedIn profiles all populated into HubSpot. So that's the final deliverable for this video. And then keep in mind that we are moving towards the final release, final video of this series of five on job changes. That feature is officially in public beta now in Clay. This LinkedIn profile and other information that we're building is gonna be really useful when we find that someone has changed their jobs. But let's get into this one, which is about phone numbers. Uh, we've got a list here. This is an active list in HubSpot. These are ones where there was no phone number left. So there's actually not that many here. You're gonna find in the other videos, we had a lot more in the beginning and then over time it wore down. And I've got the contacts blurred here, but this is an example where we don't have a mobile number, but we do have a LinkedIn profile. And the reason those are the filter criteria is because basically all the mobile providers are using LinkedIn profile as their unique identifier. Now I've got this blurred because there's just tons of personal information here. I'm going to move over to a different view to walk you through the spreadsheet, but I just wanted to show you this is real, this is populated. We've got 353 rows across quite a few different providers and I'm gonna walk you through that in a second, but just the, the data is here under, this, under the surface, but let's just focus on this view, which is gonna lay out the entire process inside of Clay. We're starting with that import contacts. This is that list in HubSpot where we do not have a phone number, but we do have a LinkedIn profile. And there are additional filters you can add to that list. You may not wanna get phone numbers for everybody in your system. You may wanna only get phone numbers for leads that come in through outbound, or you may wanna get leads that hit MQL status or some other criteria that you might wanna select for when you get a phone number. Now we go from our list and using that LinkedIn profile to our providers. What I wanna note here is that this is a very expensive way to do it. I am using basically every provider in Clay. I'm using six different providers to get phone numbers. And I'm gonna explain why in a second, but I've got them in order and I'll show you the, the actual prioritized order that we we're using in the table itself. This isn't the prioritized order. This is alphabetical order of the providers. We're going, we're starting with Lead Magic, Then we go to Forager. Then we go to Detagma, People Data Labs, Nimbler, and then Contact Out at the end. So that's the actual order of operations. And we're gonna be merging numbers in order to get our first mobile number, starting with our highest quality provider, which is Lead Magic, and then going down the list. So basically for the first number we get, I will take the first number I can find in the waterfall. In order to get the second number, I'm gonna use these results from all six of these providers and actually clean up format and put all six of those numbers into a combined cell. And then at the end, I'm gonna say, hey, get me a second number that does not match whatever results were returned from the first numbers. And so this is gonna give me two numbers in HubSpot that I can call. I think this is a great hedge for issues with potential accuracy or phone validation because like in my experience, I've been using this, I've been dialing numbers. I have yet to find a situation where both numbers were incorrect. And because I'm prioritizing the highest quality vendors, a lot of times they agree with each other. And that first number that I call is the right one. But if they don't, the second number, again, is, is typically coming from a higher quality vendor before we get to the bottom of the waterfall. And it's been, this has been working for me. So I, I am getting connects to the right numbers consistently. So some of these providers are providing numbers that are ready for HubSpot immediately. 
like Forger does and People Data Labs. Others like Lead Magic, I just have to put a plus sign on the front. So I can just show you what that looks like. And as long as there is a number there, we're putting a plus sign before it because that's the way that HubSpot is gonna want that number to be formatted. Detagma, we're gonna combine the country code and the number itself and then throw that plus sign in there. Contact out, that's an interesting one. I think especially those numbers are varied in terms of how they're formatted. They're not consistently formatted. So what we're doing to get a consistent uh, out of contact out is that we're actually running a GPT prompt. Now I'm gonna scroll through this so you can pause in the video, but I've got the formatting standard from HubSpot's actual knowledge base about how they want phone numbers to be formatted. And so I'm feeding this into a GPT prompt. I'm giving it that contact out number. And then as an output, I'm getting a clean formatted HubSpot ready number. And I am using these numbers, these consistently formatted numbers to ultimately find a first number and then a next unique number because they're all gonna have identical formatting with the plus and no dashes, no spaces, no parentheses, nothing unusual. And that allows me to get a second number and then it's those two numbers that I push over to HubSpot through this enrichment column at the end of the table. Now, if you're not paying for, and, and that's where that drives over here, right? And I'll just show you this really quick. So if you're not paying for the clay edition where you've got HubSpot enrichment, you can do this through an HTTP API call as well. But obviously, if you're using HubSpot, your HubSpot power user, I would, I would encourage you to think about paying for the clay tier that makes this easy. Um, so that's what we're doing here. And let me just show you what it looks like inside of HubSpot itself. Um, so this is an example of a contact record and this is what those numbers look like when they push to HubSpot. So I just wanna underscore that as a sales rep, I am doing nothing. These numbers are being added for me dynamically checking multiple providers and being pushed directly into the record, directly into this view here on the left side of the screen on the left column. And as a rep, all I have to do is just hit the, hit the call button in HubSpot and I can get on the phone with these contacts. And if the first number isn't good, I've worked down to the second one and hopefully the second one is good. This is all happening behind the scenes. And I just wanna show you these example lists that we've got here. I've got an example of uh, outbound campaigns that we've sent, the test campaign. We've got 108 emails that we sent out. And of those, we were able to get phone number matches for 86 of them. So that means that for 86 out of 108 contacts, we can now go omni-channel. And I wanna show you what a workflow looks like there. So we've got an outbound sync email sent. The sequence number is one. In other words, that's the first email in the sequence. And we can find a phone number. In that situation, we're gonna create a task to call that contact, we're gonna delay for a day, and then we're gonna create a task to connect with them on LinkedIn, Sales Navigator. All in HubSpot, this campaign is running, these omnichannel tasks are being created for me. Now, there's other ways to do this. If you're paying for a sales hub enterprise in HubSpot, you could auto-enroll in a sequence, potentially, or you could just kind of pass the task over and then manually enroll in a sequence that would do these things. But frankly, like I think that for us, for my use case, workflows is a pretty good way of doing this. It's feeding these tasks into my task list and these tasks are gonna show up in the prospecting workspace in HubSpot, which is great. And if I'm using the lead object, I can also have lead object um, items, <laughs> objects created through workflows as well uh, when leads are identified as meeting that criteria, basically. So. Phone numbers, super valuable. We are stitching across multiple providers. My goal is to have multiple at-bats or multiple opportunities to try to get in touch with the person, so multiple numbers is okay. A future version, future state of this would involve creating properties in HubSpot and actually identifying which providers agreed that this was the right number and then having a feedback loop where we can, we can track accuracy of those providers over time and then ourselves change the order of these providers inside of Clay based on the ones that we find to be more accurate. And if a new provider is introduced, we can change this Clay table to put them into the stack and we could remove inaccurate ones. So I would say this is a really good version one for what I need for my requirements. This is totally getting the job done right now. For larger organizations with more data, higher standards of data accuracy and things like that, there is a version of this that you can grow into where you've got that 
monitoring and tracking of accuracy by vendor and, and then over time dynamically adjusting where you're getting that data from. I think it's gonna be super useful for folks that are looking at phones, thinking about phones, especially inbound too. You don't just have to be doing scaled cold app on campaigns. Getting in touch with your inbound leads via phone, via LinkedIn is really valuable. If just because they fill out a form doesn't mean they necessarily wanna hear back via email. So I'm really excited to have this out. I would love for folks to poke holes in this and find other ways of doing this. Again, I'm optimizing for having as many opportunities to connect with them as possible. So I'm willing to spend more on credits. I'm willing to dial numbers twice if necessary. I'm willing to come back and change the providers to um, you know, maximize my odds of success. So let me know what you think and really appreciate you watching. And I'll see you in the next one.